everybody. It's Laura Kelly here again today, and I'm really excited because we're going to be using these rainbow color of paints to work with some stuff with color theory. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the artist Jean-Pierre Seurat. He was a French artist back in the 1800s, and he used a really interesting technique called pointillism, which I love because it's like just like a whole bunch of little polka dots. So got some stuff here to show you. So we have cardstock here that's pretty thick, which would be a great way for little kids to start or even anyone who's practicing for the very first time with this technique. We have a piece of wood, which would be a really fun way to make a sign for a kid's door or for their desk. And we also have a larger size canvas. This would be what you would use once you've kind of got the hang of what you're doing and you're making a larger size project. So we're gonna to start today with a piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna move this canvas out of the way and I'm gonna put my cardstock right here and we're gonna start with something really simple like a heart. So I'm gonna bring in a pencil here. If you're working with little kids, they might wanna draw their art first before they start doing their dot painting and you would just have them either draw something like a tree or a flower or a heart or a fish, something super simple. Then you're ready to bring in your palette and get your paint ready. So I'm gonna get my palette and I'm gonna put it right here. And I'm gonna do my heart in some reds and some pinks. So I'm gonna get my red and put it on my palette. Take off the plastic here and shake it up a little bit. Put a little bit of red on my palette. I'm gonna go ahead and get my pink out too because I'm gonna be using a Q-tip. So I'm gonna have two ends. I can paint double. So I have my pink and my red. And kids love this. So Q-tip painting is gonna be able to give you a really great little dot. So you're just gonna dip it in your red and then dot it on your heart, just like that. And you're gonna do that. I'm gonna flip the side over here, get some pink, and you're gonna fill your whole heart in with these little dots. And when you're done, from far away, it looks like a solid color fill, but when you get up close, it you can see all the little details from all the different little dots. So there is one really famous painting that he did that is absolutely gorgeous. It took him two years to finish it. It's called Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grand Ja, and it is gorgeous. If you've never seen it, I suggest you go and look it up and take a look at it. It's done with just tons and tons and tons of little tiny dots. So this is one project that you could do with little kids where you would fill this whole thing up and then they could either mount this on a darker color of cardstock to kind of frame it and make something really special for a parent or a friend's birthday card, something like that. But they could also um, cut it out and make a garland or a banner or something like that. You can mix the colors, so that's kind of fun too. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. We're gonna talk a little bit about color theory. So this is uh, called pointillism because you are painting with a point, making all these little dots. And look how fun that is. So there's your heart. So we're done with that project now. I'm gonna put that to the side and I'm gonna show you a little bit about what he did with color theory. He was great with colors. So here we've got a new piece of cardstock and I am going to do a little leaf collection here. So these are gonna be like three leaves. Go ahead and do a little bit more. Looks like kind of like lettuce, doesn't it? And we're gonna color that in with um, some green. Did you know that if you mix blue and yellow, you also get green. So there's your color theory. These two colors mixed together make this color. Not exactly that shade, but you get the idea. So oftentimes what he would do, which is so super fun, is he would use the color that he intended for his art to be, but he would also mix in there, and I'm gonna grab another Q-tip here and get some blue and some yellow, some blue and yellow. So from far away, you wouldn't really see the difference in the colors until you got up close and you could see that 
there were blues and yellows making the green. So how fun is that? That's a great way for kids to practice mixing colors and color theory because depending on what colors you put together, you're gonna get other colors. So let's take a look at what some of those other combinations are. And we'll just make this leaf over here a funny different combination, probably not a combination that a leaf would really be, but that is so okay. So red and yellow makes orange. So we're gonna go ahead and get some orange on our palette here. And we already have red and yellow, so I don't need to put any more of those out. Put these back up out of the way here. And we're gonna grab some more Q-tips. I love this because Q-tips are inexpensive and you can just give kids a whole handful to work with. So we're going to do some red. I need to get a little bit more on here. And we're gonna mix in there some yellow. And just keep doing all those little dots. And then we're gonna get some orange. And when this all dries from far away across the room, you'll have a very hard time seeing the difference from where the orange is and the red and yellow dots that make the orange. So he did that in a lot of his different works to use his amazing ability to make colors come to life. So some of his earlier work was more like the impressionism of Monet, which is a, another lesson you can learn about here um, with deco art paints. But he kind of grew into this pointillism, and this is what he's really famous for because it was kind of his thing, which is really fun. So those are some ways you can do it with Q-tips. I'm going to show you something else you can do that's really fun with this technique as well. So we're going to put this to the side. I'm going to get all my Q-tips and throw them in the trash and we're going to get that piece of wood out. So this is really a fun little project here. I'm going to write out my name. So L A U R A and then I'm going to use this brush. So this is actually a brush made for stenciling, but because it gets you such a great little dotty point when you use it, it's perfect for this. So I'm going to start with my pink, and I'm going to do my L with pink dots. And see, I'm kind of going on both sides here to get it to be a little bit thicker. And I'm going to do some red dots mixed in there too, because I want this to be like a rainbow when I'm done which will be a really cute accent piece or home decor for a bedroom or a studio or like right now a home work space for learning, some remote learning. So there's my red. And then I'm gonna go keep that red going and do my A and then go straight to my orange. And I don't even have to clean the brush because I'm doing some color mixing here with my color colors. So I'm gonna go right into that orange. And then I'm gonna do a little orange here and then I'm going to get my yellow. So I'm just going in the colors of the rainbow. And it's going to be so stinking adorable. So I've got my LAU, and I'm going to get my R, and I'm going to do the yellow, and then I want to get some green. I'm going to get some of this off the brush because there was a lot of orange left in there. So I'm going to get some green. Those are some big dots. And then over here, I'm just going to spread some green out because I'm going to get some blue. Now, I don't, don't have enough letters in my name for the purple, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to bring that in here, too. So there's my name with all the little dots with my pointillism technique, and then I'm going to grab some purple because I do love purple, too. I'm going to shake it up a little bit and then put a little bit on my palette here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of purple in, in my A, and I'm going to add a little bit of purple in up here back in my L in the beginning. A little more pink over top of that and a little more red. And you can keep layering this until you get it the way you like it, which is what he would do. He would um, keep on adding until it was exactly the way he wanted it. So those are some great little projects using little dots to paint. 
basic acrylic Americana paints. They come in so many different fantastic colors. The ones I have here are lemon yellow, jack-o'-lantern orange, sour apple, turquoise blue, berry red, the lavender, and then the pink that I've been using is the carousel pink, which is one of my favorite colors. So there you have it. Super simple, really cute, really fun, great way to practice. You can also use a sponge marker, I mean a sponge, um, paintbrush if you have those around your house those would be great to use if you're doing the larger canvas you can also use an eraser from a pencil so just so i can show you what that looks like so you have some options i dipped it in the red and the orange there and you can see that's going to get you an even more concise fine little dot so your choices are the brush the sponge the eraser or the amazing q-tips and this is just a great little fun craft um, art project for kids to learn about pointillism. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great time painting.